But where to mark key? It's more to us. It's personal. Good morning. So nice to have you join us on yet another beautiful day here in the Tennessee Valley. And if your home is like mine is in the mornings, it's kind of a scurry in the kitchen these days as the kids are getting ready to head off to school. You want a good breakfast before they go, pack their lunch make sure they have all their homework ready to send back and get to their teacher and for some families that's an easy thing to organize for some families you might have some kids that really are struggling and already feeling a little bit of that defeat that the school year can sometimes bring their way so pull your chair close to the TV this morning and get inspired and maybe have some new ideas to come your way because you have a chance to meet Issa Baez she is next to me she is the Learning RX National Student of the Year and Michelle Hecker Davis over there is clapping rightly so because she has our local Learning RX and proudly has brought Issa our way this morning. So good to see you both. Do I have your title right? You're not wearing a crown, but you are the Learning RX National Student of the Year. That is right. You are 15 or 16? 16. 16. So I'll, before we talk to Michelle, and the reason I said pull your chairs close to the people watching is because not everybody watching may have a child who will quite have the struggle that you went through, but everybody has a kid who would want to give up on a subject that's difficult for them. You had a lot of challenges, Issa, that you had to overcome. Will you tell us your story a little? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so when I was about five or six years old, uh, I was diagnosed with a thing called complex motor stereotypes. And with that comes cognitive and motor delays, along with some side things like anxiety, ADD. They're not in the same category, but it just happens that most kids who have stereotypes have little things like that as well. Okay. Um, and so stereotypes and the motor delays and cognitive delays caused me for years to have trouble in school, doing basic tasks, and kind of just finding out who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have tried for years to find things that would work for me and Learning Rx ended up being that thing that works for me. Uh, well, you told me when you were in elementary school, your friends would be out playing, right. and you have a mom who's a powerhouse, and so I she do. didn't want to let you give up. But you had to spend a lot of your time inside doing homework, and yes. you said you said to me with this beam, but I have big dreams. I do. So I didn't want to give up. So quickly, her dreams are to either be a marine life veterinarian or a Tony Award winning actress on Broadway. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just, just so we have that clear. So when you were in the ninth grade, you mm -hmm. began with learning RX and you did it for six to eight months. Is yes. that right? Okay, so Michelle, I want to bring you in. Do you remember, I haven't asked you this, but do you remember the first time you met her? I do, and I remember talking with her mom and it was, it was hard for her mom because of all these struggles that Issa has had for so long thinking, you know, we've tried all these different things, you know, this is this is another thing to try. It sounds, you know, cognitive skills that, that we want to work on, attention and memory and processing speed, so let's try it. And it was after maybe three to four weeks that Issa, I think, knew uh, and her mom knew immediately that um, this training, this brain training was going to be such an amazing fit for her. And Issa talks about it as just being totally life-changing. She has a very clear clear before learning her ex and after learning her ex story, which is um, one of the reasons I think her, her story is just very compelling and, and why she won the National Student of the Year contest. So how many students was she up against, Michelle? There was about 50 nominations um, across the country, over um, around 60 Learning RX centers. Um, they were they did narrow it down kind of little by little and presented the top three um, to, to us in Colorado Springs um, in July. So what this has involved for you, Issa, when you're looking at your before and after, when you, when you join the Learning RX family, you're committing a lot of your time because you're there, what, two or three times a week plus working on it at home? Yes. So was part of the success, do you think, the execution of what they had you do 
or was it also the support they gave you? Because you said they don't let you fail. Oh, they don't let you fail. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, when I would go to Learning RX throughout the week, it would be, you know, the exercises they would have you do that wouldn't, you wouldn't actually think those things would help if you were just thinking about it on a daily basis, but they do. Uh, and also, every single time you felt discouraged about an exercise or what you were doing, mm -hmm. they would bring you right back up. It didn't matter who it was, it was literally any instructor in there. If they sensed out, they'd just come run and be like, no, it's okay, you got this. And it's, it was really encouraging. So what, what, I know you can't tell me every single detail, but what is your before and after? <sighs> well, I have anxiety as well. And it has also stopped me from being confident with myself. And like you said earlier, before I would kind of, like in elementary and middle school, I would spend hours doing homework uh, while my friends were doing other things because I, I wanted to get it done right. I mm -hmm. wanted to try hard and do what I was supposed to do. Um, it just took me some extra time because I struggled. Um, I didn't want to get behind in school or stay back a grade or any of that. I wanted to be with my friends. I wanted to continue on because I knew I was capable of it. It was just going to be harder for me. Right. Um, but the be harder part was the really hard part because I have a lot of passions and dreams and lots of people have told me that they, they like my passions and dreams and they like how passionate I am. But sometimes I would be really discouraged because I'd feel like, it, I never felt like it was impossible. I just kind of felt like it almost wasn't if I didn't constantly have to struggle. Did you get tired? Yes. You must have been very tired. Yes. Um, I got exhausted. I mean, I'd, I'd be crying, uh, having anxiety attacks, panic attacks, depending on the night. It, it, it was really hard, and I, I, I thank my mom because she stuck through it with me, but um, I, I was really tired. So. Is, this the, is she the first one that you've seen, Michelle? Am I saying this right? Stereotypes? Stereotypes. Stereotypes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is she the first client you've had that has that? That's diagnosed, yes. And I think that that is a hard thing to get diagnosed and to really, mm -hmm. to really find out. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is then perhaps more common than we realize? But is, I mean, is that part of it that she has her walk, but everybody who comes in through your door has his yeah. or her own walk, and well, so often it's unaddressed? Well, and that's what I was thinking is really what brain training does is it creates cognitive efficiency. And what that means is that for someone with ADHD, their executive functioning is going to be worked which means it's going to improve and you know so when if someone struggles with memory you can exercise that and your memory can get stronger regardless of the reason that that you know you might have difficulty with memory mm -hmm. um, and it's the same thing with processing speed just like our bodies our brains need exercise so when we really can hone in and target and train and exercise in a way that's positive and even thinking about failure it's not that we don't fail it's actually that we love failure we love to do hard things and get better at them through practice mm -hmm. you know so it's a really fail forward environment failure is going to happen throughout all of life but when we get really good at it and our brains get really strong at doing that mm -hmm. then we can do anything you know your brain is a malleable thing as you're seeing and as you see every day Michelle so mm -hmm. is it something I know that you like to highlight the students that come through your doors but don't you see adults come through too yeah, absolutely. And a big, a big um, goal for a lot of our adult clients has to do with that memory, that retrieval fluency, thinking of the word, why am I in this room? That's a cognitive efficiency kind of um, uh, thing that's happening. And mm -hmm. so even when we're driving, we're utilizing our processing speed. Um, there's problem solving techniques that we can train. And really every one we work with, it's an individualized plan. So when we have, um, you know, for example, Isa coming in, we're looking at her individually. What are her barriers? How do we help her and give her that confidence and the exercise to improve her efficiency? So you did this for six to eight months your freshman year. Are you a sophomore or junior? I'm a junior. So you've been out of the family in a way now for your sophomore year, is that right? 
Uh, or do you still come back and pop in to see them? Or I should pop in more probably <laughs> uh, because they are like family to me. But um, well, now, yeah. but see, now you're so busy. If you had not done this, you mentioned that you do a lot of work with theater groups mm -hmm. around town. If you were so busy in your room crunching out those homework assignments, you couldn't then pursue your theater, right? You wouldn't have time? Probably. Although I will say before, I did also still like to do a lot of the extracurriculars. So it was really hard because I knew I had to get something done. I had to get it done first. So I'd try my best to get it done first. And then after that, if I had any time, which I almost never did, but I like made time yeah. for theater and the things that I love to do, I would do them. But now it's a lot easier. <laughs> so did you get anything? I hate to go for the the merch here, but did you get anything for winning the title? I got a very nice award. Um, that you can keep in your room and always know. <laughs> maybe not in my room, but yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, a card, and Miss Jerry got me cookies. And you got the satisfaction of knowing you triumphed. Yes. You know, you never know what your appearance today will do for somebody else watching. I mean, there might be a mom or dad watching who's thinking, you know, my child's been struggling too. And it's one thing to hear it from Michelle, but it's something else entirely to hear it from you. Do you go home every day and tell your husband, Michelle, I changed somebody's life today? <laughs> yes, and I love it. And Issa also won a $1,000 scholarship. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> what? You remember the cookies and not the scholarship money? Yeah. Well, your dad's over there. He, does, he didn't forget he the scholarship money. Okay. So either you'll see her on Broadway or you'll see her at what? Clearwater Marine Hospital, preferably. Okay. <laughs> or maybe you'll see a play one day about Clearwater Marine Hospital that she will awesome. have written. Who knows? The sky's the limit for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for bringing her to show us kind of what you do each and every day. And each story has their own success. So uh, your child will be their walk, not Issa's. But learningrx.com is the website, 305-1599. Go in, meet them, and see what you can accomplish with your dreams. Thank you. Can I get a big dill cheeseburger? Grill in the cheeseburger. Adding the pickle fries. Almost done with the dilly ranch. Order up. Sonic big dill cheeseburger. The stakes are higher than they have ever been.